Welcome, my name is Colleen Tauke and I'm a sewing specialist at Fonts and Porter. In this Quilting Quickly tutorial, I'm going to show you how to put together the blocks for the quilt called Divergent Pinwheels. For this pattern, visit our website and it will show you how you can purchase that. Okay, we're going to get started. We're going to be using two and a half inch strips and we're going to be matching up with a brilliant white. It makes all those colors look just wonderful together. And we're going to create this block you see here on the sewing center. It has four matching quadrants and then it's joined with a kind of a window pane effect of a really narrow white and then they're all put together with sashing in between. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to be using these two and a half inch strips. Now you're going to want to go through these strips and plan ahead pairing up two colors that you like to play together because they're going to be used within um, repeated use within the quilt. So for, for instance, this green and the blue are seen four times within the quilt in the same um, type block. So go through, plan out which ones you want to put together so you can create your blocks. So for instance here, we have made, um, brought together um, a dark blue uh, and a light blue and created a strip set. And from that strip set, you're going to be cutting eight four and a half inch units off of this. So we're going to be cutting, um, making sure that um, stay nice and square, keep things in line. The four and a half inch units is the length we need. So we'll overcut just a little and take away the selvage. And slide that in there. Whoops, move down just a little bit. Four and a half inches the length we need. And you would then continue cutting down your strip set for the number we need here. And then you're going to be using those strip sets together to, to um, make these quadrants. So once we have two of them together, I'll show you here, I've laid these so that light to dark and dark to light, right sides together. We're going to be marking them with a quarter inch seam marker and we're going to put it on diagonally, corner to corner and mark on each side of that tool. That will be our stitching line. So mark all the way the block like this and then we're going to take it over to the sewing machine. Now I would probably have paired up and made all my strip sets then cut all my units and paired them up like this and mark them all so I can go to the sewing machine and do all the sewing at one time. That way we repeat skills over and over. It makes it a lot e quicker in our assembly. Now when you stitch across the block, you can then pivot on the far end and I'll show you with needle down near the edge, we'll leave the needle down, pick up the presser foot, we'll jump across to the other side, and since that's going to be in our seam allowance, we can leave that stitching in there and then come back and stitch the other side. While we're doing this, we're actually making two units at once. Oops, I'm gonna get across the block like that. Thread cut. And now that I've got it's so kind of like a railroad track across my block. I can come in. I can either use a scissors or I can use a rotary cutter. Remember I said doing things together in groups. So if you stitched all these at once, you could come back in and slice them all apart at the same time. Now, as you're working down through these, you'll notice this um, triangle is made with a large light and a small um, need a dark blue. This one, the small um, triangle is light and the larger piece here is dark. Divide them into two camps. You're going to need four that look like this for one block and four that look like this for another block. You can divide them up as you're cutting them apart and what you're looking for is then four matching units like this that you can lay out into your divergent pinwheel. The clue is that as you work your way around the block, your colors alternate so you'll know you'll have those correctly placed. Now, we're almost there for the block. We need to come in now and put in the spacer in this row and in this row. So we're cutting kind of narrow pieces, 
They're one inch cut, so you're going to want to be using your best quarter inch seam allowance because you want these to look very nice and straight when you're done. Okay, so you're going to join those rows together. And then once you've got created that row, you're going to want to come in and put the cross piece here. And that will create your row. Now, in order to keep these lined up, because the row could slide a little off and you want this to be a nice um, jump across, across the block, you can come in and you will notice that the seam allowances, you're going to be able to feel the seam allowances underneath. So just look at the anatomy of your block a little and you'll be able to line up that, that short bar across the center. The same kind of thing goes on when you put blocks to blocks in rows because what we're going to be doing, so I'll take these out, I'll show you, it's row alignment and this designer loves to make blocks that have row alignment. We've got, we can just create a little bit of a row here and we'll throw in another one. You would probably space these a little further apart in your actual quilt top, but just for demonstration purposes, we're going to put this here. And then we're going to be doing the same thing as we did within the block, is that we're going to have short spacer blocks in between within the row. So you can create row one and row two. And then you're going to use longer pieces, go according to your um, pattern, how long these actually need to be and then you're going to be joining those across like this. Now in order to keep these aligned, I'm going to send you to another quilting um, tutorial. It's a so easy tutorial to find on row alignment. So you can get more of the details on how to perfectly align your rows there. Thanks for joining me today.